Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. So for today's video, I'll be going through what do we have to consider when you are starting up a new farm, part 2. We have actually released a previous video on what do we have to take note before we decide on the location. So this video is pretty much a continuation of that previous video which I have put it in the description. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back guys, RS Aquaculture produces content on mud crab farming and shrimp farming using Bioflock systems or RAS systems. If you like the content that we are producing, do like and subscribe and you'll get a notification on the new videos that we will release every week. One of the most important considerations before starting out your aquaculture journey is to look at the availability of feed. As you might have already known if you have been following our channel that we do use a lot of trash fish for the cultivation of mud crabs. So this is because mud crabs actually prefer the trash fish over pelleted feed. But this is not to say all aquaculture species do prefer trash fish. As you can see, although trash fish is cheaper than pellets, they require a lot of preparation. Which is not probably not ideal for those that are looking to cultivate a species that requires a lot of low minimal labor effort so as you can see that uh, you know feeding trash fish to the crablets can be a bit more time consuming than if you were to feed pellets that could be just easily spread out into the pond so do know that this is one of the first most important consideration before you are starting out your aquaculture journey because you will need to first source out whether do you have that trash fish that's available to your location or even though you have some pellets that you could reuse and it depends on the cultivated species that you're looking at Right, so another good contrast is actually the cultivation of shrimp. So as you can see here, this is actually a harvest from our pond. And as you might already know, that actually for prawns, we do not use trash fish because it carries a lot of disease that might spread into the, the, the prawns. And in this case, we actually use pellets. But for shrimp, because shrimp has been a more commercialized species over time, uh, there have actually pellets that are developed for this species. So making the cultivation of this species uh, relatively easier than mud crabs as you do not have to source for any additional trash fish. Right. The second variable that I will look at is actually the availability of good seeds. So as you can see here, these are the seeds that are used in our shrimp culture. And you can see that they are very lively and very active. So having a hatchery that is near to you is really important because it allows you to source for high quality seed. And having good genetics will actually mean that you will be more profitable than your competitors. So before starting out, it is actually crucial for you to decide whether if you were to cultivate tiger prawns or crablets or even shrimp, do you have a hatchery that is able to provide you with good quality seeds and ensure that you're able to scale along with them. And the last variable that I will look at is how do you actually distribute your product. So just to give you an example, if you are cultivating mud crabs, you will probably have to sell them live. So because most of the clients all over the world that consume mud crabs will usually prefer them live. So you need to pick a location in which you are near to a nearest airport in case that you were to send out your crabs into an overseas market such as China or Singapore and even Japan. So having good logistics is actually a very important consideration to look at before you were to start your aquaculture journey first. If not, you'll be forced to sell all of your products in the local market or what we call the domestic market, which in some cases might not be able to fetch very high price as you what you can see over here, which is only 500 baht. All right. However, it is also important to take note that not all products are necessary being sold live. You can have some products such as soft shell crabs that can be frozen and exported, or you have some products like shrimp that can be sold on ice or even frozen as well. So it really depends on the product that you are farming and look at the distribution that you require. Alright, so that's all for this video. Thanks guys.